Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and it is finally time to get back into the swing of things with some Advanced Wars content. Yes, I know. Haven't done Advanced Wars in a while on this channel. I was busy, I was gone in America, but now we will see more Advanced Wars content return to this channel on a regular basis. Kicking things off with a game that I played today, literally just a few hours ago. You see, I was very rusty, you know, I could feel it, you know, if you, have, if you don't play Advanced Wars for like a month, you, you get very rusty, so I queued up on the Live League, and the game that I got was a pretty hilarious one, and I'd like to show it off. So, uh, as you may know, Luxios are allowed on the Live League. I pray for the day where they might be allowed in Global League. I think it will really spice up Tier 4 to be able to pick uh, Flak and Jugger. But, you know, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But I'm very happy that they're allowing them on the Live League. And uh, this is actually a high funds match. And Flak is actually pretty good in high funds. Now, you may look at this matchup and you may be like, huh? Flak and Kindle, really? Like, what, like what, what's going on here? This, this doesn't seem fair at all. But actually... Flak is not so bad in um, in high funds. He's actually tier three in high funds because luck damage is very strong because there's so much money, there's so many high tech units, so luck damage actually gets to do something. Uh, it's still a pretty tough matchup. I, I'd say Kindle's probably a better CO still. I, I think Flak is like probably bottom tier three, but when I saw that I was in a tier three high funds match, I was like, ah, why not? L let's go for some good old Flak, shall we? And the map that we're playing on today is actually my favorite map of all time, I think. This this actually is... I thought maybe it was like top 5, but I actually think it's my favorite map of all time. It's Gloomforged. I have casted this map before on this channel, I think twice. Uh, it's a naval-centric map, which automatically makes it a lot of fun in my book. You have to build naval units here. Battleships are incredible because of this body of water here that goes in, in the center. Battleships can lock down like a very large portion of the map. There are airports on the side, but they're very slow to get to. It takes a long while before you get to the airport. Like, you'll see battlecopters maybe on day 10 and beyond. But before then, you need to build black boats to fight over this island right here, which holds six properties. And keep in mind, it's high funds. So it's 6k uh, income t times two. If you can control the whole island, it's 12k. That's a lot. And in Live League, it's even more important because uh, by day 30, whoever has captured the most properties will win. So it's actually very important to fight for properties in, li in, in live queue. So uh, you need to, you need to really build a lot of black boats. There's a lot of shoal control here, and with black boats, uh, you'll eventually see battleships coming in, and then you need to build submarines, and then you need to build cruisers. So you actually get to see all kinds of naval units on this map, and because it's high funds, you can actually afford them. So that's why I really dig this map. Gloomforge is one of the most fun maps to play on, and it's live, which is even more fun. So, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to showing you guys this amazing replay commentary. Not a high level match, uh, as you can see right here. I, I have an add-on that shows like the live rating, but a fun match nevertheless. So down here in the red trunks, we have me as Flak. My opponent in the blue trunks is Ren's AI. I don't think he's an actual AI because he spoke to me during the match, playing as Kindle. I'm viewing this in on the actual website because that allows me to see time remaining, which will actually be a factor in this particular match right here. So the first thing you want to do on Gloomforged is to go for these neutral bases right away. You're going to see both players do this. There are actually a myriad of really fun openers that you can do on Gloomforged. You can rush out an APC on this base. You can get an infantry over here, capture the harbor, build a battleship and base lock. This is actually not a bad strategy, especially uh, if you're playing like a strong infantry seal like Sensei or Sami. You can really grab this harbor and you can really wreak havoc on your opponent. It's a bit meme -y, it's easy to counter, but in, in live, you might actually get away with it. However, rushing at an APC is not my favorite opener because you really want to get a black boat early on. Now, I actually think that player one has a distinct advantage on Gloomforge. Reason being is, uh, they will be able to get to the island first, uh, which is actually a pretty big deal. And whoever can get to the island first has a big initiative advantage because uh, they will usually be able to attack the other player. But you can see both po both players opening black boats right here. If you are playing a CO like Drake, who gets plus one move on black boats, or you're playing Sami or Sensei, which gets plus one move, then the black boats can actually reach the island one turn earlier, and that's actually huge. So Drake is extremely strong on Gloomforge. 
he's an entire tier higher than he usually is because naval units are actually useful on this map. I mean, you may remember the replay that I casted. I was playing Drake against Sensei and I was able to just murder my opponent because of global damage and his strong naval units. So Drake is ridiculous on Gloomforge. If I get a tier two Gloomforge match, I always pick Drake. I think he's amazing. So both players opening APC right here. I was very happy to see this. Um, this is a transport heavy map. So you wanna build APCs, you wanna build black boats. You can see I'm already going for the center island and I actually built a second black boat as well. So because again, you're actually going to be producing so much infantry on Gloomforge because there's so many properties to capture. And because you have these harbors, you have two harbors, three harbors for each player, you can actually build a lot of naval units. And when you build naval units, it's usually better to pump out infantry with your bases because naval units are so expensive. So, so here I'm just using the black boats to move my infantry forward a little bit. And here you can see I'm setting up the black boat to transport even more infantry. I want to try and kind of grab the central island as much as possible. So <laughs> I build a rocket and I build another APC. Um, maybe a little bit overkill, but my opponent built two APCs, so I was like, why not? You know, I, I figured it, it probably can, it will work out. Rockets are very strong on Gloomforge on the sides right here. Like you can nestle the rocket like here and you will you can pretty much like lock down the entire right-hand side. So indirects are actually pretty damn strong on this map. This is a very strange map. This is not your traditional map. Like you'll actually not see many vehicles at all here. It's going to be naval units, air units and indirects for the most part. There'll be some vehicles, but because of the narrow nature of the map, you, you don't, they don't really see a lot of play, which I actually think is pretty fun. So, as they it rolls in right here, both players are still very much in our capture phase. I use my APC because I want to try and grab this airport early, as well as there are also two Com Towers on this map. So, firepower is generally very high, which I really like in high funds. Otherwise, high funds can be a little bit stally. But you can see, I'm moving infantry over to the island. I really want to try and grab these properties early. If you can control the entire island, then you're in a very good spot. However, my opponent is already building his first battleship. And this battleship is going to be a problem because it's soon going to be able to lock out the entire island. And I don't really have this harbor yet, so I can't really build a submarine. I can build a submarine on the left-hand harbor, but uh, the submarine won't really get to the battleship in time, so there's really no point. But my opponent has a tank right now on the left side. And he's using his uh, black boats to transport even more infantry to the center island. And now he builds a cruiser, anticipating the uh, the submarine. So it's a bit of a bold move right here, but he knows that I have to build a submarine to counter this battleship. So he's just preemptively building a cruiser. Cruisers are units you almost never see in Advanced Wars because they're really bad. But on Gloomforge, you actually need to build them because they're the only counter to submarines. And because battleships are so good, you will see submarines out of the enemy. So this is what I love. About, like, naval combat actually works in Advanced Wars as long as there's an incentive to build battleships. Battleships is what starts the entire chain. So when you build battleship, your opponent builds subs. When your opponent builds subs, you build cruisers. And then you're... you're your opponent, you have to build battleships to counter the cruisers, and then you build out, you bring like bombers out to try and con uh, uh, counter the cruisers, which may lead to your opponent building carriers to ward away bombers. So, again, kind of the, the, the naval avalanche, or the kind of like the, uh, you know, the, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's like a cascade. It starts whenever battleships come onto the field. So. I build a battleship of my own. Again, I don't I don't really have this harbor captured yet, so I would have loved to build a submarine, but since he has a cruiser, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm just going to build a battleship on my side. I'm okay. And here I decide to do something a little reckless. I actually attack Kindle on a property, and I start capturing here. This does give him... This is, in hindsight, not a very good move on my end. I, keep in mind, this is live, so, you know, neither of us are playing, like, super optimally. But I really should, this is a bad engagement, I really shouldn't have done this, this was this was a net loss for me. It does have the benefit of keeping his battleship locked down in this position. He could have moved the battleship down here and locked down my harbor, which would have actually been a problem. Because the submarine, if I build a submarine, he'll shoot on the submarine and he'll deal a lot of damage to me. So, um, yeah, thinking about it, maybe it was like a good idea to like trick him into keeping his battleship stationary. So, I, he does have a tank here, which is a bit annoying, it's going to start interrupting my infantry. He moves his uh, cruiser down as well. Using his APC to try and get the airport, which is smart. 
day 10 rolls in, I'm not going for both my comm towers. And here I make a little bit of an oopsie. I do not capture the comm tower first before I attack. I hate it when I do this. And again, I love how the black boats can be used for repairs. It's so cool. And now you can actually see I have a very big infantry presence on this island, but he does have a battleship in better position than me. This rocket is not really doing a whole lot. I mean, it's kind of threatening infantry, but I'm not, in hindsight, I wasn't super happy with this rocket. I think I would have preferred to save up money for like for another battleship instead. I do have 46k in the bank though, so I do have a lot of money to spend this turn, and I build a battleship on my right side, as well as a lander. Now this lander, I kind of regret building it. Um... The idea is to try and get, like, I didn't have enough money for an anti-air. The idea was to try and get an anti-air on the island, because that locks down any air pressure that your opponent will be able to bring later. I only had enough money for a recon, so I was like, ah, if I can get a recon on the island, I guess that works. But he does have battleships in position, so it's not like the recon will have free reign to target infantry. It will get shot down eventually. And this tank is just being very annoying right now. I don't really have a good response for it. So, in hindsight, I think instead of a lander, probably should have built a tank instead. So, a little bit annoying, and now he has two battleships coming in. He's doing a good job warding away the island, like, I'm not able to take this. And now, look, look at this position of the battleship. This battleship now covers practically the entire island. So he has two battleships in position right here, which means he's going to win the central island. He brings in his cruiser as well, just, you know, there's no submarine yet. But he builds a submarine to ward away this battleship. So you can see the naval combat. The naval combat is in full swing right now. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Like, naval combat is just so much fun. He builds a tank on the right side, which is uh, probably a smart move. I bring both of my black boats. I love it when you have two black boats because you can use them to refuel each other. And then I build two more infantry. Again, I don't want to give him the center island. I may not be able to take these properties, but I'm sure as hell going to try and prevent him from taking mine. But I am moving all over with a decent sized force on the right hand side here, and my battleship is in also in like a decent position right here. And I'm getting ready to transport a lot of units next turn. Using this APC just to protect my infantry at this point. Now I have to build a cruiser because I, I need some kind of counter to the submarine right here. So cruiser comes out. I'm trying to stay out of range of his battleships for the most part. So day 11 rolls in. My opponent dives the sub. Captures the comm tower, deals a little bit of damage to my infantry, not a bad move. Attacks my APC. And I was going for this property as well, so... My opponent actually does have a decent income lead on me right now, so I do need to do something about that. He's moving his battleships just on the, the, outs, uh, on the outskirts of my range. Builds a rocket? I, I think the idea is to try and protect his own submarine against my cruiser. But that's still a trade I'm okay with taking. Like, I'm okay with trading a cruiser for a sub anyway, so... And it's not like the rocket one-shots the cruiser, so it'll only be damaged. So here I'm like, okay, I don't want him to take this property. He already has an income lead. I'd like for it not to be bigger. I set up my rocket in a defensive position right here. And this turn, I get a little cheeky. I decide to do a huge amphibious assault right here. Um, I just go ham. I even move in my lander, and I, I unload the recon on the shore, which... Probably not a great idea. This lander's gonna be a target. I think battleships can with a comm tower they one-shot the lander. I'm fairly certain uh, I'm pretty sure they do So that's just that's like a one-shot immediately. Yeah, 104% so not great. It's not great Oh, I think I skipped a, Oh, what happened here? Oh uh, What did what did I do? Oh, there we go. Sorry, I, I skipped. I skipped. I, I I went two turns back. Uh, so yeah, uh, here I actually just decide to let his sub attack my battleship, which may not be the best, but I figured I could just destroy the the cruiser. And he moves in his his rocket to protect his submarine, but that does allow me to get a shot on it, and he kills my lander. Yeah, kills my lander and my black boat. So I lost two transports there. And he pops his Urban Blight. So, a pretty scary turn for me. He's doing a lot of damage. And he's transporting more units. I lost two transports, which is actually a pretty huge blow. So, maybe not the best play for me. He's also threatening two properties on the left-hand side here. 
So I was a little bit sad about that. Now we're starting to build battle cryptors out. I pop my barbaric blow. And my goal right now is to try and clear out this entire island. So I attack with my battleship. A pretty bad roll, all things considered. Kind of want to see like how much damage that had potential to do. If I remember correctly, it was pretty high. Yeah, 25 to 71. So I, I could have I could have dealt 7 HP. I dealt 4. So, eh, I guess it was okay, all things considered. I kill his submarine. And I go for his tank. I deal 6 HP of damage. That's a pretty good barbaric blow, honestly. And here comes the recon. The recon's going to be useful in cleaning up these infantry. And I will be able to kill a lot of his infantry here. I'm moving my cruiser as well. And a pretty, pretty decent tank engagement. Could have one-shot it. And so far, like if you if you look at our value, he's slightly ahead of me. It was not a great... Honestly, a brute force might have been a better move here to save some power charge. I don't really know if the barbaric blow was the play there. But he gets a pretty decent chain on the right-hand side here. He kills my battleship. He damages my other battleship. So I'm taking a lot of damage here. I'm being a little bit reckless with my engagements. Playing a little bit too much like Flack in the campaign here. He's got three battleships right now, which is not good for me. So let's see. Day 14 rolls in. And at least I'm doing decently on the sides. Like, I'm, I'm kind of losing in the middle, but I'm doing decently on the side. My battlecopter is coming in right here. I set up my battleship. And I just, you know, I tried to capture what I can. I am actually, like, kind of... I am winning the ground battle here. But I'm losing the naval battle. So his battleships are free range. But I'm, I think if I can just keep his battleship focused on shooting on my infantry, then maybe I can just keep them locked down forever and win on the sides. That's kind of my game plan right now. And I am kind of winning on both sides right here, so... I don't hate my position, but he definitely has a big value lead over me due to taking those naval engagements right now. And I continue to just, again, once again, I am placing my black boat in range of a battleship. I really have lost too many transports in this. I should have transported here instead. I don't really know why I did this. Again, live league, I didn't check all the ranges. You can see that my opponent is very low on time though, 8 minutes to my 14, so... Uh, my idea here is to just keep playing and eventually maybe time my opponent out. So he's moving in with a battlecopter here though, which is going to be problematic for me. And he still has both of his transports and he kills my transports. I actually have no transports left. He's killed two black boats. He's killed two black boats and one lander. And this is actually a problem for me right now because I cannot transport any more units. So I really should have taken better care to protect my transports in this battle. I really shouldn't have given him all these free hits. He builds another cruiser. So his naval force is actually pretty scary now. He also does a very annoying move here with the sub blocking in my sub. He kept attacking my battlecopters with his units. I'm not really sure why he did that. Bit of a weird play from him. Alright, so day 15 rolls in. I have my power ready, but I don't think I pop it this turn. Recon is actually being pretty pretty valuable. I'm killing a lot of infantry units, but as long as these battle he has four battleships right now, so it doesn't really matter how many units I kill, he is going to take the island eventually, especially considering I have no transports. But again, my battlecopters are doing pretty well. He he should should have built an entire on the left hand side. Uh, his cruisers can't really reach my battlecopters in this position, so. Uh, I'm actually liking my position on the left hand side. I have a lot of infantry ready to cap these properties. So even if I'm going to lose some of these properties, if I can take the side properties, it, sh it should all be good. I have to build two black boats this turn because I lost so many transports. So. Now I'm going to get shelled by battleships again. And my recon, good old recon Chan, is also getting taken out. So he's amassing a very big armada in the center here. And this is starting to get kind of scary. So I'm a little bit scared right now. He pops another Urban Blight. It's so annoying how many Urban Blights Kindle can fire off in high funds. He also gets to shoot on my rocket, which is not great. And he also built a bomber from this airport. So now I need some kind of response to that. 
So it's my turn. I pop my Brute Force to see if I can get some decent luck rolls. I'm trying to take down this tank, but it's just not working. It remains on 1 HP, which is very sad. I build, bring in an Untire to ward away the Bomber. And I, he allows me to get a pretty good position with my Battleship here. Of course, he does have a Battlecopter. But I also have a lot of Battlecopters of my own. But I am starting to dominate on the left-hand flank here. He needs to be careful. He really doesn't want to lose this common tower, so he needs to do something here. And I am kind of just going scorched earth on a lot of his infantry, but he will he has two transports ready to transport more infantry into the island, so it's I really won't be able to hold on to this island. It's only a matter of time before he takes it back. He gets a decent shot on my battleship here with the battlecopter. Doesn't do too much damage, but it's still annoying. But I'm still a little bit behind in income, and uh, I am lacking a lot of naval units. However, my saving grace is the timer. Look at this, my opponent is at 5 minutes. He's going to be on increment real soon, and at that point, he's going to start to play really poorly. But he's bringing in a lot of battleships on the left flank, and this is very scary. And he builds a carrier. Pretty good move on his end, it completely shuts down any battlecopters in the area. 30,000 is a big investment, but it is a. No, I think it's a decent price to pay in order to completely lock down air units on one side of the battle. So, Carrier is actually a pretty good unit on Gloomforge, which is another reason why I really love this map. So, here I decide to go for his Battlecopters. I get a nice little shot at his battleship, and I pop another Brute Force. I do get a shot at his rocket, which I like. That's kind of sad I didn't kill it, though. But I was pretty happy with the damage I dealt to him this turn. I move in my submarine. The hope is to try and trap this bomber. I don't think he's gonna fall for it, but. But I'm actually dealing a pretty significant damage to him this turn, so. I was pretty happy about this. So moving in on the sides, bringing in artillery, hoping to maybe lock down his harbor eventually. So he actually took a lot of damage this turn. I think I was almost able to equalize our unit value. I still, he still had by about 50k, but look, I was able to deal a lot of damage to his naval units this turn. So here, I was very surprised to see him not pop Urban Blight, but now he's capturing two properties on the island, and eventually he's probably going to get these two as well, so. It's a pretty good counterattack from him, he's dealing a lot of damage. My sub went down, very sad. And look at the armada that he's massed on the left-hand side right now, this is getting very scary for me. And at this point, I'm like, oh my, he's gonna pop High Society, isn't he? Because he's not popping Urban Blight. So I'm like, ooh, okay, he's got a lot of properties. I need to be careful. Now, he, he blunders a Battlecopter for no reason at all. I don't, I think he got trapped, actually. Yeah, he trapped himself on my sub, which allows me to take it down, which is very nice. But, um... Here, at this point, I'm just trying to weaken some of his low, low HP units, and I'm, honestly, this is kind of reckless by me. I know a high society is coming. I really shouldn't be moving on this flank at all, especially considering how many battleships he has in the area. And with the carrier and everything. I'm trying to sneak a submarine through, but the problem with the submarine is that he sees it, because it moves through his infantry's vision right here. So, honestly, looking at this, this was very reckless of me. So day 18 rolls in, and he's not popping his powers. And I was very surprised to see this. And you're about to see one of the big fatal first mistakes. Well, actually, I have made many mistakes so far, but you're about to see something very, very, very scary. So he has a big armada on the left-hand side right here. And at this point, I really should have predicted the High Society. You can see I'm pulling back, but there's one thing I'm not aware of. And that's the fact that with High Society, this Bomber can destroy this Antire. So, he pops his High Society. That's a big firepower increase right now. So look at how much damage this Bomber is doing to this Antire. 120%. So, uh, he goes in with High Society. He murders both my anti-air, and gets a really good engagement on my tank on the right-hand side as well. Ooh, really bad. I was winning on the right-hand side, now I'm losing. So that was a pretty scary high society. 
However, look at his time. He's got 23 seconds left on the clock. He is officially on increments. And that's kind of my saving grace in this map. I'm like, okay, I'm losing. I'm behind on value. I'm behind on unit count. And we're, we're tied on income. But maybe if I just keep playing, he'll start making mistakes due to being low on time. Different people handle being on increment differently. Some people, they just crumble immediately once they're on increment. Other people are able to kind of speed up and not play that much worse. But it's definitely a big advantage for me. Like, I have been able to stockpile 11 minutes, which means I can actually take my time with my movements and actually, like, think about where I place my units, whereas he just has to move. So you can see right here, he's actually playing very passive this turn, and when I saw this, I was kind of happy because I was like, okay, well, yeah, we can build up, in we can build up a large army. I, I don't mind at all. You're an increment buddy. So I'm okay with letting the unit count rise on both sides right here. This, this favors me right now. So, here, I take out his Bottlecopter, and uh, my, my goal right now, I, since I, I, I can hold these two properties with my battleships, I won't be able to take this island, but what I can do is I can attempt to go for the sides, and I also need to try and prevent him from taking my sides. If I can do that, we are on day 21, there's nine days left. I do have a victory condition here, even though it looks pretty bleak. There is a way for me to win this game. If I can just stall it out, try to get a property, maybe I can even play for a draw. So uh, this game, while it looks bad, it's not as bad as you might think. When my when your opponent is, in, is on increment, you should always keep playing. But here, uh, he is able to secure this property right here. I also blunder and I put a Battlecopter in range of the carrier, but he also blunders and put his carriers in range of my battleship. So I think it's a fairly good trade, all things considered. So he goes hard for the right-hand side right here. And this turn, I take my time. I take my time and I re I remember sitting in Move Planner uh, because I had like 11 minutes stockpiled up. And I find a pretty decent attack. I take out his Bottlecopter, I shoot on his carrier, I activate Brute Force. And this is a little bit of a gamble right here if you look at the damage. 78 to 146 percent. So I'd say it's like a probably a like, Someone in the comment section could probably do the math, but I think this is roughly like a 60%, 60 to 70% chance of success. But I am able to take out the APC, which allows me to bring my fighter in and take out his bomber. So this is a like this is a good engagement on my end. I attack here, probably not the best idea. But now you may notice that my Battlecopter actually is uncontested in the center right here. He doesn't have any Battlecopters or... Like he has a fighter here, but... Um, this Battlecopter can actually, do, like, ward away most of his infantry here. And my opponent is on increment. So I go in with my Empire, which are pretty potent during black, uh, black power, I almost said, flak power. And you can see my opponent is struggling like now, 2 minutes and 36 seconds. And he goes for another high society, which actually ends up being pretty damn good. So, high society, don't underestimate it in high funds, guys. It's actually pretty strong. As you can see right here, he's not getting a lot of city attacks, but he's getting some. He's actually doing a lot of damage here. And he's also now slightly ahead in income. He's got a very scary armada still. But this turn, I'm actually able to, to pull off a pretty decent counterattack. I go in, I take I focus fire down his Empire, and now my Battlecopter is has pretty much free reign to do whatever it wants, especially considering his uh, his carrier is gonna die very soon. I take down his submarine, or almost take down his submarine. I was very angry about this. I, I want to see the roll on this. I think I had a chance to kill it. 80, uh, 89 to 118%. I'd say it's like a maybe a 50-50 chance of taking it out. But I was really hoping I'd be able to kill it. Because if I could if I could have killed it, then my sub could have gone in and attacked this battleship. But I still get another a, a sub of mine to attack his battleship, so I'm actually doing decent damage to his armada right now. But he could have been so much better. Like I could have taken out two of his battleships this turn. And I have a bomber on the way as well. I'm building a lot of bomb. Like, bombers are amazing right now, considering he has so many naval units and so little empire. So we're on day 23 right now, and I'm playing for my life. He is still on increments. Sadly, he is able to do quite a lot of damage to my naval units this turn. But 
but I'm not completely out of the game yet. I have to prevent this capture at all costs. This is extremely important. He has a Neo tank on the way right now, which is really nasty. And he's moving in with a lot of infantry units as well. This turn, I activate a Barbaric Blow. And I blunder myself. <laughs> Oh, I was so mad. I was so mad. I completely forgot about this stupid sub. So, uh, yeah, I... That was really stupid. That was incredibly stupid. And, uh... This Barbaric Blow, it's okay, but it's not great. So, uh, yeah. This was, a, this was a big blunder on my end. I thought, at this point, I may have had a chance to turn this match around. But this following turn is just completely devastating. He activates a third high society. And he just lays into my troops. Everything I have just gets blasted off the map. And this turn, I build the three missiles of shame. And I resign. So. That was the match. A pretty chaotic match. Pretty wild match. I think I, I, I had a chance of winning, I think. Uh, my opponent, again, like, he had two seconds left. Um, he was... He played actually pretty well on increment. Uh, but I, I think if I had played this a little bit better, I think there would have been a chance for me to turn this around, maybe. Maybe. I could have maybe played for a draw at least. But I clutched, and um, I lost. But... I still thought the map w match was fairly entertaining, and maybe you guys enjoyed it as well. I promise, guys, there's going to be more Advanced Wars content coming back on the channel. Sorry for the long absence. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment. It really helps out uh, a lot. And, uh, yeah. My name is Sin Mengs. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!